Hey, Misanda here. So, um, th I knew there was a video at 5 a.m. for 40, 45 minutes. Apparently, it's 48 minutes. I didn't even know it was 48 minutes. On Terry Bogard for Smash Brothers. And I raided someone last night. And then I come back just because I was lurking. And it, it's already out. So, at least that surprise out the window. But we're going to react to this video of the breakdown. And I don't know what the hell they're going to talk for 48 minutes. Hello everyone, this is Masahiro Sakurai from Sora Limited. The Super oh, Smash Bros. Ultimate game was recently honored with five awards at this year's Japan Game Awards. Five awards. It's received a great many awards on top of that as well. Each award is very meaningful to me, so I would like to, G -G -G -G. to extend my thanks to all those who have voted and to all those who have supported us. Thank you Damn. so much. Is that what I'm gonna talk? They're gonna add more stuff? 48 minutes? Without further ado, let's begin the presentation. First, we'll start with what the Neo Geo is. Oh, gonna have a it refers to a 1990 history console for use in our history lesson. At home, as well as to the name of the system itself. In 1990, the equivalent to the Super NES had only just released in Japan, so if you wanted to play arcade games at home before then, the only option was to play the less polished ports on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Well, yeah, the port. However, with I the Neo Geo that. system, you could play Neo the Geo. versions of games at home with no drop in quality. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I actually had that program. Right around the year that I started. And I had Metal Slug games. and stuff like that too. Back then, Japan had rental services for arcade. I have, I have the Neo Geo. In other words, you could go to a nice. rental store, rent an arcade game, take it home, and play it. After that, they were sold for home use, but a single game would cost about thirty thousand yen. How much that dollars? That's expensive. But if you think about it, compared to playing a game in the arcade 300 times at 100 yen per play, you're getting your money's worth. At the time, some people actually thought this was cheap. Oh. I mean, they're in your place, though. There really are people who've played games in the Super Smash Bros. series 1,000 or even 10,000 times. Anyway, the MBS, as it was called then, was sold in various places, and yeah, for an arcade machine, like going to school. it wasn't all that expensive. <laughs> You could also get them on the That's why you'd end up seeing lots of candy stores having a metal slug cabinet. Metal slug! Oh, yeah. The home version of the Neo Geo came with this controller. Can you see? It has four buttons. And that's Geo. And this is the actual console itself. Yeah, it's so slim. Button, and here you slot in the big game cartridges. This is the Neo Geo? Just kidding. Oh, I was like, huh? So slim. Actually, this is the Neo Geo X, the portable version that was released afterward. I imagine, I just don't. I just remember the the emulator. Beat Nintendo Switch to it. A portable, multi-purpose console. Updated iterations of past systems are emblematic of the Neo Geo. Damn, they were pretty. Let's talk about what Fatal Fans. It released in 1991, the same year as Street Fighter. Then they renamed it King of Fighters. This one came later. Or, or is that? Hmm. It launched after Street Fighter 2, like many of the other fighters. Or, or wait, Fighter is King of Fighter a crossover? As a title that was developed to capitalize on the popularity of Street of Fighter 2, Street but Fighter that's not really the case. Actually, both Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury were developed using the original Street Fighter as a foundation. But Street Fighter 2 had In right, fact, right. the development of Fatal Fury was started by one of the planners of Street Fighter. Uh, they wanted to make their own characters. Did I just hear you say, wow? This one is also a multiplayer focused fighting game. I did a lot of research. In this story, someone named Jeff Bogard is killed by Geese Howard. Geese Howard starts up a fighting tournament in Southtown, which he runs. There you go, King of Fighter. Okay, never mind. The tournament, which is known tournament is called King of Fighters. Fighters. I mentioned the term King of Fighters, something you may have heard before. Yes, there's actually a popular series called the King of Fighters, and that series was named after the fighting tournament within the world of Fatal Fury. Well, I'm getting a history lesson, I'm learning at least. <laughs> And Terry Bogard, who is the protagonist of Fatal Fury, also appears in all the games in the King of Fighters series. This is going to be a 20 minute of, of history lesson. 
If you want to play a game from either of the Play-Doh Fury series or the King of Fighters series, many of them are available now on Nintendo Switch as part of the Arcade Archive series. Archive. You may not know which one to play first, but my recommendations from the Fatal Fury series would be Fatal Fury Special. Special. From the King of Fighters series, my recommendation would be the King of Fighters 95. I used to play, what, I think Andy? But if you want to play a fighting game when I used King of Fighters? strategic elements, then I recommend the King of Fighters 98. The one with the long, the Next, long hair. I'll give you some insight on Terry. I mean, Wilson. they had long hair too, but. Actually, this video was recorded about one month prior to its release. Okay. That's because we need to translate and edit videos like this one, and that takes time. The game footage you see here is not from the final production ROM, so please understand that there may be some elements that differ from the final game. Since we have the opportunity, I want to talk about Terry mm. using a lot of SNK lingo, meaning in this discussion, the younger generations may feel a little out of the loop. I might be out of the loop too, because even though I played it, I didn't know the lingo. <laughs> When we released the original Nintendo 64 version of Super Smash Bros., I was often asked, who is Samus? Whether or not the character is fun to play as is more important than whether the character is new or old, or whether the character is recognizable to everyone. Yeah, just if it's fun to play. I want to make sure I present Terry to you in such a way that you can fully understand his appeal. So thank you. Yeah, I think I would all oh, released okay, later in the night, but apparently it's released right now. <laughs> this is Terry right, Bogard in finally. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. He's still wearing an outfit that reflects the era of his original game, but we did our best to make him look cool in a variety of ways. <laughs> when he stands next to Ryu, it almost makes you wonder, is this really a Super Smash Bros. game? Doesn't it? Like a fighting game, Just right? Just like Ryu, when you're playing one-on-one, -on -one, he'll face the opponent. Mm -hmm. Actually, he always looks in the opponent's direction. I pretty much, I was pretty... move him to a location behind the opponent, he'll quickly turn around, always keeping his focus I pretty much the opponent. thought he was going to be like that, and it would be like fighting Let's talk style. About his moves. The his inputs. usual attacks are jab, body blow, body blow, and high kick. Each move is something familiar from the Fatal Fury series. And his dash is power charge. Ooh, I like that dash attack. You can use in real bout Fatal Fury special and others. In the original series, it was one of his special moves. Mm -hmm. His tilt attacks are middle kick, rising up. Kind of short though. Oh, Rising, I forgot that's like Ryu. They're all kind of like Ryu. Ryu. His attack speed is slower. This is to match his original series. Uh, yeah, it's slower Ryu though. Attacks. First up, backspin kick. Down smash. This smash attack is the equivalent to his strong attack. But the Wait, does it hit behind him? Cooler than in his original series. Next, wild upper and slide kick. Oh no, that's a down Both smash. So the that's the forest smash, and that's a down. Then his midair moves: jump, oh. then chop, chop, jump, then kick, jump, then backward kick. Oh, his his attacks are actually uh. And then somersault kick. I mean, low low range. However, but... this somersault kick was not included in the original series. But we needed a move to attack up, so we created a new move. Interesting. They made a new move. Also, jump and then karate punch for a down air attack. If you successfully pull off a down air, it's possible like, to attack with a meteor effect, as you meteor. can see here. It's basically like views. Next, I'll cover his throws. His forward throw is his familiar buster throw. His back throw is also buster throw. <laughs> back throw forward throw. And his down throw is neck breaker drop. Neck breaker drop. In fact, he used it in the game Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition. I miss oh, the same on Hyper Neo Geo 64. And then his up throw is grasping upper. This sort of dodge attack can be performed after a spot dodge. I mentioned Ooh. dodge attacks. And this actually does exist. Dodge attack? During a spot dodge, immediately press the button to counter attack. Damn. That's interesting. During a dodge attack, your upper body becomes invincible, so this Only the upper body gives you the advantage when you counterattack. Only the upper body. <laughs> now for special attacks. Interesting. His neutral special with just the B button is power wave. Charge it, right? Something like that. 
Depending on how long you press the button, you'll use yeah. one of two types of special attacks. Weak and strong. This one is weak and kind of Also, instead of reuse A attacks for uh for view, weak and strong original game, you use three buttons. So there were weak, medium, and strong attacks. For Terry Bogard, you could use four buttons for special in the original game, but there were only four two buttons. buttons for punch. So that's why he only has two attack levels, weak and strong. This rule applies to See. all of his special attacks, so please keep that in mind. But it's only for special, right? The not the neutral. Is a move that shoots but reuse the other way. But how does it look in the air? In his original game, you couldn't oh, use the input commands. This is how it looks now. As of the King of Fighters 96, the Power Wave ability See. had a shorter range, so we've recreated that version of the move. It's a useful move in, in the air and helps keep opponents in check. Go away. <laughs> Next, we have a special performed while holding in the direction of your opponent, Burning Knuckles. What about away from the opponent? also has a weak and strong version, as well as a command input. Like the Hadouken command input from Street Fighter 2, you okay. perform this command still do the using command. the directional input, down to the side in the direction of your opponent, and then press the button. A or B. Move a bit stronger. This means that Burning Knuckle has four variations. Weak without command input. Strong, strong without command input. Weak with command input. And strong huh. with command input. The strong version using the command input is of course the most powerful. You'll hear a noise when you input Sound the command. Go. And if you've succeeded, oh, you might also notice green, some huh? green mixed in with the flames. It may be slight, I can't wait to try it though. The strong version with the command input really is strong, even capable of KOing opponents. Yeah, opponents. It can be blocked from all of you. So be on the lookout for that. In such a case, you'll be left wide open. Yeah, it's kind of like back uh, charging, and this is but not as much. The Super Smash Brothers. I mean, for Smash, but the side specials are split into two versions: a back special. Yeah, and there's a the back special. one apparently. That means there's one more side special than usual. Crack shot. Oh, the crack shot. This is a familiar move from his original game. Crack shoot. There's yeah, crack also shot. a command input version. It's performed by using the directional buttons down to the back, backwards, followed by the A or B button. The command version can launch your opponent quite a bit further. Oh man, that's like a that's like the butterfly kick. The butterfly wing. It creates a bit of an arc, so it can be used as an anti-air attack when your opponents try to hit you. At close range, if you happen to be blocked by a shield, it's hard to be counter-attacked because you'll pass through them. There's something I want you to remember. Yeah. When you do a crack shoot off screen, this is how it will look. Terry swings with his whole body when using Burning Knuckle and Crack Shoot, so it can be yeah. hard to recover. But you can use it to recover, no? However, if you keep pressing backwards without inputting commands, you should be able to initiate Crack Shoot in the direction you're trying to recover. Let me show you one more time. Do this, then continue to press backward. Continue to press backwards. And then you can recover. If you press too quickly or input some commands, you'll fly right off the stage, so be careful. Hmm. And this is his up special. Oh, man, that takes a lot of tackles. practice. Also, oh, it's gonna be right in tackle. It also has weak and strong versions, each with differing heights. What was the command? And did you notice that if you hold down briefly to charge, your whole body glows a little? What? In this case, Can your you whole do body will be invincible <laughs> at the start. Either way, your legs will be invincible. Here's an example of this invincibility legs. in action. With the standard rising tackle. A lot of random yeah. I got completely wiped out when I threw myself at them. Ugh. But with Rising Tackle's charged command version, you can't be hit at this moment. So you come out on top. Interesting. You can of course use Rising Tackle as a recovery as well. I mean, that's what up bees are for, right? Even after using Burning Knuckle or Crack Shoot, you can still use Rising Tackle. Can you, can you hold down? This oh. is also very helpful when you're trying to recover, so please keep that in mind. That's why I got His down special too long. is Power Dunk. Power Dunk! Rises and descends. You make it faster though, right? 
This side, down diagonally, down command input is also known as the Shoryuken command. Shoryuken! If you can pull it off, you'll be invincible at the start of the move. Also, Damn. you can hear a sound when it connects. Damn, it's like it clicky. <laughs> now, let's talk about canceling specials. <laughs> I'd really like you to keep this in mind. A shield or what? First, if you use a special after attacking with a standard attack, the special won't come out until the move animation has finished. That makes sense, right? But here's what happens if you cancel out of it. At this moment here, if you've successfully entered a special command input, the rest of the animation will be cancelled, allowing you to attack again immediately. Well, man. I'll do that again. Throw out a kick like normal. Oh my god, I gotta practice this like a fine game, yeah, extends, for reals. You'll perform the move. Set it up so that when you attack, you can go straight into a special. Or burning knuckle. This Ugh, burning knuckle. Options. Please try this out. For example, neutral attack one, two, and power down. This is a bread and butter combo. Aside from that, you can also get Terry to fly out and attack in an M shape. In his original game, you could only cancel attacks on the ground, but in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's possible to cancel aerial moves. The types of aerial attacks that you can cancel are limited to things like neutral air attacks or down air attacks. And your front four air? would be wise to use these combos to expand your offensive options. Only neutral and down? And at last, the final smash. His oh, what's this final smash gonna be? Triple geyser. Triple geyser? Terry will shoot three geysers straight forward. However, it's not bad again. if you think that's all, close, close by. Mistaken. Oh, if you get him? Oh my god. As you can see, if Triple Geyser can anyway, doesn't he you'll do this follow too? up with Power Dunk and Buster Wolf. It's three moves in one. It's He's a visually funny. striking combo. You may be wondering what happened to his original super special moves. Yes, they're here too. What the? the command book? With the usual rules, when Terry's damage meter nice. rises up to 100% or higher. Oh my god, little Mac too. When his overall HP drops to 30% or less, you'll see the go icon at the bottom of the screen. At this point, if you enter the specific command, you can initiate the power geyser you see here. But you still have go on there. The command input is, if I borrow the way it's said in the original game, down, angle down, side, and then do it again. Angle down, forward. So you got like. Well, it's a bit complicated. You go like, yeah. Then backward, then forward. Yeah. You see? It is an action game after all, so you get to control the direction of your punch, be it right or left. In that case, no matter which direction you're going for, just swap the right input and left input. It's like this. Downward, then backward, then forward. Or down, down and then the opposite direction, if that's forward. Down, and then backwards, and forward. there's other super special move. Buster Wolf. You can initiate this one by repeating the Hadouken command input twice. Twice. Down to side, then down to <laughs> side again. You do the combo, cancel it. Pull off moves using the original game's command input. So you like boom, you boom, boom. Duh. Inputs. In the case of Power Geyser, remember that. I'm gonna bring my controller down, playing Terry. Side, down, forward. As long as you input the command downward to the side, to the back, downward again, and then forward, you should be fine. In the case of Buster Wolf, it's simply down, side, down, side. That should be easier to remember. Even though the command input is complex, it can still be blocked with ease. 
since these moves can only be used when Terry has taken a lot of damage, you'll be in even more danger if your opponent blocks. So they're high risk and high return. Please save them for when you really need to make a last ditch effort. Everything is last ditch effort. No again, but be careful. Your opponent may be able to predict your move and take action. Essentially, it's best to use it when it's least expected. Or to cancel During a combo. Out combo like yeah, this. see? Knew you can cancel that. It's a special For thing. the taunts, I decided to match his original game. His up taunt is Hey, come on, come on! from the King of Fighters series. His down taunt spins his hat like in the spins real bout series. And his side taunt is Stand Up from Garo, Mark of the Wolves. <laughs> I've and then work out and then cosplay his hair. special moves in the game so far, and you can hear his voice. Like that. We've incorporated both his longer remarks, like Power Wave, from older titles, and his shorter remarks, like Rock You, from newer titles. Huh. I'm not gonna pay attention to that. And here are his color variations. There's a good variety of colors available from across the series and the cat design is slightly different in each version. Neo Geo, Fatal Fury. They're based on his original games, and we've also included some from King of Fighters 14 King of Fighter. and the anime series. Throw his hat. Sometimes takes off his cap too. For example, it happens during his victory pose. Over here. His cap also blows away when he is defeated in stamina oh. mode. Stamina mode though. Oh, the stage. The stage is hey, you can see those characters. Stadium. It looks like one hardcore fighting coliseum. I mean, they were fighting already on this, but now we can see the other characters. The Jumbotron reads King of Fighters without V. Well, it's when we talk about it's keep title, zooming in like that. V up front, but the name of the tournament in the game story is just King of Fighters. This is a very unique stage, and it follows some rules that haven't existed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate before. Bring out First, I mean, the gathering. edge is walled off. I was walled off. In the Super Smash Bros. series, you need to launch opponents off the stage. You want to get ramp, lock them up. Here, however, the more damage a fighter has accumulated, the oh, more they break. visually react when they're launched see. into it. Can you see? Eventually. Fighters will break right through the wall. And then there are fireworks come out. Yeah. Basically, this special feature allows you to KO an opponent only after they've accumulated enough damage. I mean, it's still not tournament worthy, still banned, but okay. That way, you can enjoy the battle more like you would in a traditional fighting game. But it's good practice, I guess. When you're close to the wall, Can't it's possible it. to be KO'd even when your damage is low. It's just yeah. like in regular stages. It's like regular smash. In the real bout Fatal Fury series, there was a feature in which the walls could be destroyed and players could suffer a ring out when they hit the wall. This isn't exactly the same, but we made it kind of similar to that. And the same. We hope you'll enjoy playing at this stage with all its special rules. Got block. Only one By the way, comes there are guest characters in the background, right? Yeah. Since we have the opportunity, I'd like to introduce them to you. Cameos. Oh, they have a whole second just for cameos. First up, Andy He's Bogard. Andy. He's the adoptive brother of Terry Bogard. Both of them were adopted from an orphanage and raised by Jeff Bogard. However, while Terry's teacher was Jeff Bogard, Andy studied under Mai Shiranui's father. He uses the Kopoken fighting style. Yeah, I remember like rolling up. The Joe Higashi. He's one of the three main characters from earlier games in the Fatal Fury series. He's the only one that doesn't have any connection to Geese Howard. He's a Muay Thai champion. Muay Thai. Kung Fu Ru. He's the master of the Holy Fist of Eight Ways, and he also trained Jeff Bogart. Eight Ways. He can enlarge his body as well. Billy Kane. Oh, like Master. He's been in many Fatal Fury games since the first one, and he's the right-hand man of Geese Howard. While he appears in the first game, his costume is based on his appearances in King of Fighters 97 onwards. You can't really see his back, but the no smoking symbol is definitely there. No smoking symbol. Geese Howard. He's the big boss of Southtown. He's the rival of Terry Bogard. Falling off of buildings is his thing. 
Rock Howard. His first this, appearance was this, this guy the Wolves. What's that crazy guy? He's the son is of him? East Howard, and Terry actually raised him. Yeah, yeah, okay. That means his appearance in this game at this age with that look doesn't really jive with the timeline, but Smash is kind of like that to begin with, right? <laughs> Kim Kapwan. He uses Taekwondo and considers huh. himself. Violet is completely justice. weird compared his to everyone else. Is Maybe the way he stands. Yuji Yamazaki. Oh no, this is a crazy his guy. His first appearance was in Fatal Fury 3, and he's a criminal known as Dark Broker. The JoJo he's very thing. selfish and sadistic. Blue Mary. Her first appearance was in Fatal Fury 3 too. She uses. Because I didn't cut corners with her. She's a good drinking buddy of Terry's. Those were the characters from the Fatal Fury series, but from here on, let me introduce characters from other series. Other series... Oh. Athena Asamiya. She's a Psycho Soldier. Psycho Soldier Psycho. is a memorable game released around 1986, and it was the first title to feature a fully voiced theme song within the game. This epic song Psycho was Soldier. also remixed for Super Smash Different games in uh, SNK or... recorded in both Japanese and English. Music start. Stroke Sanagi. He's the protagonist oh, I remember this guy. of the King of Fighters series, and he uses the ancient martial arts Kusanagiryu. Speaking of the protagonist, there are differences depending on which version you're talking about, like Orochi and Ness. Someone actually following me while I'm recording this? <laughs> anyway, he is forever a school kid. Sorry about that guy. Originally, he was introduced as Kyoko Sanagi's rival, but when I first saw this character in the game at the time, due to his look and attitude, I thought, whoever created this character must be a genius. Genius. Oh, this guy looks cool, I remember Goro Daimon. He's a judo gold medalist belonging to the Japanese team, and he likes to throw his opponents. Chang Hohen and Choi Bonge. One is an escaped convict, and the I other remember these slasher. guys from somewhere. They are currently undergoing rehabilitation under the previously mentioned Kim Kapwan. Or they, they're like a duel, right? Ralph yeah. Jones and Clark Still. Something like that? I don't know. Originally, Whatever. they were main characters in the Ikari Warriors series before Neo Geo. They appeared as guests in the Metal Slug series too. Met Yo Sakazaki. The protagonist of the like, Art of Fighting. Doesn't the guy fight like this? The original Art of Fighting was released just before Fatal Fury. Or Fate something like that? That means it was the first game to implement a true super special move. How could I not include him? King. Her first appearance King. was in Art of Fighting, and she's a bouncer and bodyguard. She is a beautiful woman with an androgynous sense of style. Next, Yuri Sakazaki. She was kidnapped in the first Art of Fighting game, but after that, she's trained hard and mastered Kyokugen Karate in just one year. In other words, she's one year. Genius. genius. So, as you can see, we've included many characters. Did they like disappear and then they reappear, or did they you run know, out and they come back? Cumbersome. I mean, it takes a lot of time. But so many people love each and every one of these characters, even outside the confines of their individual series. So we simply mm. had to do our best by them. By the way, you may have noticed that a very important character from the Fatal Fury series was not included. Yes, Mai Shiranui. Super Smash My. Brothers Ultimate is for good boys and girls of many different ages. So oh yeah. Not to feature her. Oh. Ridiculous. <laughs> I get it. Also. My music features a variety of tracks. And they the um, jiggle. Affects which special guests will appear. Oh, the example, music? There is a track called Pasta, and when the music is playing, Andy Bogart will always appear. And play with mu music, music. I hope though, you look but... forward to that as well. It's been like 20 minutes. It's gonna be 20 minutes. Okay, minute, I'm done providing information. So now let's jump into some actual battles. This time I'm going to play the Terry route of classic mode. Spoiler! Spoiler! On top of that, I want to try and hit the highest intensity level. Let's see if Pro I can man. get all the way up to intensity 9.9. Honestly, playing the game in extreme difficulty while doing commentary is extremely hard. One or the other is doable. It's like a streamer. Doing both at once forces me to divide my attention. But that means I should do my best at both. I'll do my best. First, this route is named the King of Smash. Smash. Three characters who have some sort of connection will appear as a set. A challenge that looks somehow familiar. You can jump in and down. Okay, the first intensity level is 5.0, so I should be fine. 
All battles and oh, carries stamina. are stamina battles. This stage's special KO rule that I talked about earlier isn't the best match for stamina rules, but oh well. On his route, a lot of stages feel like they're from a traditional fighting game. Okay, it's time. I did it anyway. Oh, you can do the wave just to get them. Of course, even in this mode, it's not impossible for me to try for a KO, but normally it'll be over before that. There. And burn level. Done. Looks like he's saying, give me something. Next, round two. <laughs> it's the Legend of Zelda team. Just because characters this, this is why it can take 20 minutes. That doesn't mean that they have to be from the same game. This is Let's Go to Seoul, Kim Kapwan's team. And I've got it set up so that we don't move from the bottom of Prison Tower. Hey. It would be easiest to simply knock him off the screen, but I'm not going to do that because it's not as fun to watch. Oops, I knocked him off. Over here. It's gonna blow. Will he do it? Oh. 3%. Alright. The boomerang's not coming back. And I can't go to the edge. Oh no! <laughs> the tables have turned. Cancelled it. Cancelled. He wears his cap backward. How much time left? Dunk. Okay. 15 minutes. But now you can call this the giant stage. All the giants are lined up. Of course, the music track is Taku and Stephanie. Of course, he says. You might wonder who Taku and Kitabi are. But it seems like it means Tanaka and Kitamura. This track is from Fatal Fury 2. There's a giant wrestler named Big Bear, and this is his track. Regardless of the track name, it's a really famous hard rock song. So please give it a listen. Charchako! Or, yeah. Jumped over the it. original song was called You Shall I Dance. There's that masked wrestler. I always Big knock him back up. True identity. Big Bear. He's called Raiden. Jump! So I'm beginning to it. find the intensity quite tough. Round four. The whole atmosphere the is a little different the same. than how it's been up until now, right? We've been to arena-style flat stages, but suddenly we're at a battlefield form stage. Oh, oh there's an item. Shield. Oh, you want a waste of a shield break. There's an arcade game series called Athena, and this stage uses that as a motif. Oh, he's metal. Now that I'm thinking about it, I suppose both Lady Palutena and the Athena games were possibly an homage to the Athena of Greek mythology. Plus, I wanted to do something where two characters who are similar or have similar abilities are together. It's a nice Kokugenyu team. Oh, dang. If I let my guard down, I'll easily be defeated, so I need to pay attention. Yeah, just I get used to those uh, cancels. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> By the way, you can use moves like crack shoot to aim for overhead platforms, so they have some utility to them. I kept her in check. Phew, that was close. Looks like that fire bar didn't work out for her. Or dunk. It's getting brutal. The oh, it's Sonic now. Hey, look at the bossing man. You could say the opposing team is comprised of heroes from different companies. Sonic and Terry are on the stage. Actually, Sonic and Terry were both created in 91, so they're the same age. Same age. 
and the next year, in 92, Kirby Damn, all those, all those homing attacks. Everyone's getting old. But they're still on active duty. You know, it's easier to fight on sloped ground. When using a pack shoot, it's especially easy going uphill. Oh, yes. uphill. Going downhill It's though. too soon to be taking this much damage. I started out with 150 HP, so I feel like I'm losing. Next, Mega Man. He was born in 87. The first Street Fighter came out in 87 as well, so that makes oh, you the same shot. age. That was bad. Don't go off screen. Ah, he went off. I'm sorry. And now, Pac Man, Pac -Man. 1980, is here. Of course, this character was made by Bandai Namco Studios, but when I talk to their team, I'll call him your company's character. The company characters have Pac Man. They always come back saying, oh yeah, our company's character. I often have these kinds of exchanges with them. Oh, that was close. Cool. But I won't give in until the very end. Because I've got a super special move. Ooh, that what? That hit? Not enough? Hit uh, around? Well, how about now? It's bad to keep using the same move, seriously. <laughs> Next, you could call this Team Darkness. With the track Soy Sauce for Geese, playing on the rooftop, oh, you can got get the aura of a final showdown. Oh, not good. Up next is Ganondorf. I don't want to get hit by him. Not even once. He's huge. Thanks. Oh, good. You can't take things lightly in moments like this one. That was punishable, though. That was a bad move. Alright, can I do this without getting hit? Now for a scary one, Bayonetta. Darkness. Yep. Oh, all of the enemies. I'm giving this everything I've got. But that was just dangerous. Pulling off that mid-air jump was risky. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's so good. That was a beautiful move. The witch, the witch time. But she couldn't take it. I don't know what a commentary you can do. It's watching right now. Time for the final battle. It's not Master Hand, but Ryu, Ken, and then and himself. <laughs> Art of Fighting version 23000000.0 is playing. In other words, it's kind of a themed fight. He's super strong, so I have to work hard. Ooh. I'm not pacing this out very well. I'm starting from 150 HP, so I wish I defeated Ryu before my HP dropped to 100. Enough, right? But I can't give up until the end. I have a super special move. But Terry is last, so he can use the same super special move. But this is no time for chit chat. It's really tough doing this while chatting. Oh no! This is no good. Got it! It gets even tougher from here. Power away! Power away! I messed up a perfect shield. Here he comes. I gotta be on guard. Oh! Yeah, nice. But with a power wave? <laughs> if I could have pulled off a super special move, that would have been awesome. But, alright, did I make it to intensity 9.9? Yes, I did. Nice. That was hard work. Wait, are you missing?
The maker of Smash. Harry Bogard is really fun to play as, so I hope you enjoy playing as him in such situations. Next, let's talk about the music. This time we have something very special lined up for you. For instance, when we were deciding which songs to include in this set, we thought about concentrating on songs related to Terry, but there were a lot of big band style songs that didn't really fit the mood of battle. That aside, the music of SNK has always been great, right from the beginning. So this time, we selected the remember the music, what the hell? Called SNK style. Basically, SNK style. we expanded the selection a bit to include series outside of just Fatal Fury and the King of Fighters. Hoping. Yeah, I gotta go to work SNK after this. So. always been great, really. This was true before Neo Geo, freaking 48 the minutes. from the old The King of Fighters games to the arrangements in the latest installment, The King of Fighters 14. And they really went all Terry we lot of and SNK for 48 minutes. We finally managed so. to narrow our many candidates down to 50 songs. 50? They are down even more or have We never intended to do something like this, of course. So we submitted our 50 proposals to SNK, expecting them to pick out maybe 10 or 20 Is that, that all they considered of them? acceptable. But they told us they were okay. Okay. As a result, we've pretty much added in 50 songs. Oh Have a look at the list. The arrangement. That's oh. how we ended up with the list we have, but we worked hard to deliver some of the best remixes. A new one, yeah. This was a very special one-off case, and I don't think we'll be able to do the same for other series. To be honest, I think that being able to hear such a selection might make Spider's Pass worth quite yeah. a bit more than its price. That's the game I used to play all the time on Neo Geo. I do hope you'll enjoy it. Bumper games that are my Calendar jam. Pack 4 comes with a spirit board too. Board, yeah. The spirit board can be selected via the spirits menu. I didn't notice they changed the board. Have a look at the background. If it looks familiar to you, you'll start feeling pretty nostalgic. Oh man. Shinkiro-san's artwork is always so nice and vibrant, isn't it? You can also look forward to mock tournaments featuring each of the characters. Oh. That old school Athena and Ralph and Clark artwork really is something. Now for the Mii Fighters. Please have a look. Oh, Mii Fighters. I guess all the SNK stuff. Oh, they did it so they guess a brand new video. <laughs> Round 4? I mean, I, I don't buy the Mii costume because I don't use it. That's my showdown. Oh, they're going with all the SNK moves, yeah. Can we get a Metal Slug Gunner? I think it's gonna happen, right? Hard of fighting. Oh, real. The wait, no, this is direct King of Fighters. Oh, I'm pretty much all the guest characters. Virtual Fighter. Oh. Now we have a hero. That's just a cis trophy. Jaggy. Oh, they don't have the metal slug. Don't think they have metal slug. If I sent each, I, mean, I don't use Mii Fighter Spirit, so... SNK was also involved with the Mii Fighter set this time, so it has a strong fighting game influence. It borrows a lot from the series Nakoruru comes from, like her Wind Slash attack, so I hope you'll enjoy those little details. Moving on to Amiibo, here's the new lineup. Incineroar. Simon, Krom, and Incineroar. Each of these will be released on Friday, November 15th. Hey, that's when Pokemon Sword and Shield drops. Hey. <laughs> oh, the new updates. Okay. Next, well, let's discuss the details of the updates. Can, can they change Little Mac to have a side beat? We've made some improvements to battle arenas. 
First, we're making it so you can send messages to each other in a battle arena. The messages are preset. Can they change it that we can spectate? So and also, the player who created the arena can now change the rules. Oh, wow, finally. How about We've the spectate? Also added the option to play either battlefield form or omega form at random in the stage settings. Oh, stage settings now. Okay. Aside from that, you can now pick elite only as an arena type. Holy oh, only. Furthermore, and can we at least spectate if we like miss the if we're picking a character and coming back? As long as the arena type is set to public and no password is set, we've made it so anyone is now free to join. So I hope you'll enjoy that. Terry is due for distribution on November 6th. If you have the fighter's pass, you'll be able to get right now? straight away, or you can purchase them separately. And go download the game. Well, I think that wraps it up for our Terry Bogard showcase. I hope we were able to convey his appeal. But then what's left? By the way, like so much the reveal stuff trailer left. was aired in advance. It was created using SNK pixel art. Sorry. The complete yeah. version of it, including the gameplay portion, is finally ready. I'd like to oh, show it to you. Oh, we're gonna watch it now. So that's what the last, wait, three minutes. Now this is something of an inside story, but I of course wrote the plot for SNK's pixel art packed reveal trailer. When the invitation comes out, you might recall how it says, Don't be late, S. That is not what I wrote. <laughs> it makes me think, ugh, this is why I hate inside jokes. After leaving it to the staff, it snuck its way in there. Always late. You're always, you're always late. But I just want you to know that the S is also the Super Smash Bros. series S. Well then, let's move on to the intro movie. Oh my god, don't be late. <laughs> yeah, which is it? Okay, so... I wonder if they're gonna add something at the end. Not uh, pixel art. Or still pixel art. Don't be late, S. Wait, the same, huh? Wait, what? Why? To join it again, huh? I think they would show this in the beginning. But they might change something at the end? Cover! This is the Fury. Oh, we were trying to add this part. How about that? Hey, come on, come on. Hey, Kirby. Ugh. Oh, but still won't. Okay. They told Fury. You think he's King of Fighter though? But yeah. Ah, so they really did go all out on this area. Huh? We crammed in a little too much content this time. Hopefully, I'll be oh, able to more, future I mean, just him talking. Shorter. Three seconds. Whoa. Okay, well, I gotta go to work. It was interesting, a lot of uh, empty spaces I'm just watching, but... I think it's still out right now, so... There it is.